Brighter Shores is an upcoming free-to-play MMORPG by Andrew Gower. Yes, that Andrew Gower behind the legendary MMORPG we all love, RuneScape. In this video, we're going to check out what this MMO is all about and how it's coming along. Whenever you're ready, grab your cup of tea, sit back, relax, and enjoy. Brighter Shores, a game that has been in development for a decade, has recently stepped into the light by releasing its very first trailer, catching the attention of many RuneScape players, including myself. Now, you might be thinking, hmm, if the trailer came out a few days ago, surely the game isn't releasing anytime soon. Well, you'd be wrong as the game is scheduled to release in the third quarter of 2024 on PC and Mac, with closed beta testing before the release. It's worth noting that at least two of the three Garen brothers are working on Brighter Shores, with Andrew's brother Paul being the narrative designer for Brighter Shores. The company behind Brighter Shores, called Fen Research, currently has three public employees other than Andrew Gower on LinkedIn. I think it's safe to assume that the game is being made by only a very small group of people, which also might be the reason why the game has been in development for so long. Brighter Shores is built on its own engine called Fen Forge Engine and seems to have a similar tile-based movement system like RuneScape has, although the map does seem far less spacious. I do like the art style though, it's vibrant and pleasant to the eye. Now, if you pay close attention to some of the video footage or screenshots available, you'll notice that your current chunk or square is lit up while the other ones around it or the ones that are attached to it, seem darker as they're out of your view range. This makes me wonder and a little bit worried that this game will have a linear and samey path to whichever area you wish to explore. I mean, I love Dungeon Siege 1 and that's an old game with a mostly linear map, but it's not an MMORPG. I'm not sure if this is something an MMORPG should have in 2024, but it doesn't necessarily have to be a bad thing. I just think that's a limiting factor to how many players the game can attract. Brighter Shores has three main classes, being the Cairo Knight, Guardian, and Hammer Mage. It's difficult to tell if the game will be classless like RuneScape, where your class is literally what you pick to wear and use, although from the Steam page screenshots, I can see multiple style icons on the action bar, possibly indicating that you can be any class at the switch of some gear. On the topic of gear, there might be a system which requires you to identify newly found gear as there's a screenshot showing gear with a Chironite icon and other gear probably picked up from the floor with a question mark icon indicating it might be unknown until you use some kind of item on it or speak to an NPC. Combat wise, the game seems to be more similar to the older iterations of RuneScape without 100 different types of abilities in which you simply click and attack with the option to use special attacks from weapons. In this case, they're on the action bar. In terms of the bestiary so far, I like that there's very little that reminds me of RuneScape monsters, which is a good thing. I just like games with a diverse set of unique monster models. Quests are something I can see being really good in Brighter Shores, as RuneScape is one of the few MMORPGs with actual quests. Is anyone else getting Morning's End Part 2 light puzzle vibes from this part in the trailer? I know I am. Also, are these actual cutscenes? That's a good sign. I also have a feeling these so-called Hope Port obelisks are going to be the game's version of what is in so many games the fast travel transportation system. In RuneScape, it's the Lodestone system. Perhaps the most exciting thing about Brighter Shores and why people feel like it's so similar to RuneScape is the fact that the game has an expansive set of skills or professions to train that aren't combat related. Brighter Shores features professions like the stonemason, blacksmith, alchemist, chef, dinosaur builder, yes, dinosaur builder, and a merchant profession. Brighter Shores also has the professions you'd like to see as a RuneScape player in the form of gathering skills such as fishing, foraging, woodcutting, and mining. Interestingly, it seems that players are able to train woodcutting in more ways than one. In the trailer, we can see players trimming leaves, chopping trees with an axe, and two-player woodcutting using a saw. For fishing, there seems to be an active method in the form of spear fishing, two players fishing with a large net, and solo fishing with a fishing rod. Another thing that caught my eye in the fishing part is that you're able to AFK just like you can on RuneScape, except while offline. I mean, that's literally what it says here, right? Fishing sterlet, passive, continue after logout. Hmm... RuneScape players must be dripping right now. This could be what Andrew meant in his interview with PCGamer.com by minimizing the grindy gameplay often found in the MMORPG genre. I wonder how he's going to do this while also combating bots, as he mentions on Twitter, because I don't think you can truly stop people from botting your game, especially if you're able to 
AFK and do things offline, but you can lessen the impact, I suppose. The game is free to play, however, certain content will be locked behind a premium pass on release. The price of this premium pass has not yet been revealed, but it seems to give you access to double the areas or content compared to free to play, which will obviously be expanded upon in the future. It also lets you get exclusive dyed gear, a character name without a hashtag suffix, and opens up access to player trading, which, um, what? I have to believe this is just because the game won't have tons of content on release and needs to go from there, because locking player to player trading behind membership or a pass in an MMO seems awfully strange to do. Trading should be a core feature in any MMORPG. I don't care if it doesn't rely on other players to be fun, but it just... What? Locking free-to-play players out of high-level content, on the other hand, makes total sense. In conclusion, from what I've seen so far, I'm interested in Brighter Shores and will definitely be giving this game a shot in some kind of beta test, or if that isn't possible, the full release. It looks good and seems like it will have enough content to be a fun game, and I'm not just saying that because they have a team machine. I don't really think this game is going to appeal to the MMO-hungry players out there looking for the next best MMORPG with every system and the best graphics smacked together, and as such, I feel like the target audience for this game is existing or past RuneScape players. But let me know what you think down in the comments below. If you enjoyed the video, leave a like and perhaps consider subscribing. Catch you guys in the next one. Peace.